Ball want to take just a second. Thank Brian Casella, Chase DeMiles, Shauna Overman, and Ricky Caruth for being on here. And uh, uh, special thanks to Ricky for a little brainstorming session we had a couple weeks to put this together. So the structure of today's call is we're going to be talking about the listing presentation. Um, these guys, just a side note too, are all going to be either speaking or on a panel at the upcoming summit in Dallas, Texas, September 19th through 21st. I'm really excited to have them there. So here's what we're gonna do is we're gonna just start um, on the right side of my screen, which is with Shauna right now. In the next three to five minutes, give us the rundown of your listing presentation. Like what is the overall concept of it? I know you can't go through the whole thing, but give us the, the, the blueprint of it. Okay, so my listing presentation um, it's definitely catered to me. I've taken bits and pieces of what I've learned from other people, but I've also had to learn what works in our market. And I want to encourage everyone on here to really get comfortable with other people's ideas and presentations first, um, because that's what I did. And then I adjusted for what I was seeing in the market. So if a seller is meeting with me, um, first of all, someone else has scheduled that appointment. So my first opportunity walking through the door, I'm building rapport, introducing myself. Then we sit down. I don't look at the house first. We sit down and I go over three questions with them. Number one, where are they going? When do they need to be there? Number two, if they have a price in mind already, um, because if I'm not going to be hired or if I'm really far off, I want to know immediately. There are times that I will walk out of a listing appointment five minutes in and I'm done. Um, one of those actually almost happened yesterday. And my third follow-up question is, can I be honest with them? Because I need to set the stage of how comfortable I'm going to be in the appointment and whether or not they actually want the truth from me. Yesterday, after question number two, I thought I was going to be out the door. But when I asked question number three, I ended up getting the listing before I left um, because I was honest and upfront with the seller who had already met with 10 other agents and they were giving him you know, complete BS out of the gate. It's either all about them or it's all about getting the listing and reducing their commission, which we're not charging the lowest commission in the market by far. Um, so for us, one of our areas that we highlight when we're in a listing appointment after we get to know the seller, after we talk about those three questions, um, everything we do is social media. I mean, we're getting 18,000 views on listings within 48 hours on our social media boost. So we're showing that out of the gate. There are no other firms in my area that can compete with that. They're just not getting those types of views. And if you've looked on Zillow, the properties on Zillow are not getting anywhere near that. Um, we have admin on our team that reports those numbers back to the sellers. And I'd love to see those numbers in other markets. So we're just doing some incredible things by boosting our listings and putting them right in front of people. So it's definitely something we're highlighting. Um, by the time I'm done with those three questions and talking about social media, I'm usually hired. Um, right now, we're competing at a really high level, but there are a lot of agents who are going in the door and they're not really cared, um, caring about what the sellers want, what the sellers need, and they're either completely selling themselves or they're not selling themselves at all. Cool. So that's awesome. In a nutshell. So that's it in a nutshell. So a couple notes I wrote down for you guys to pay attention. What was Also, real quick, what was the uh, question two that you asked? Question number two is we're asking them you know, in a perfect world, what would your house sell for? Okay, cool. Awesome. So a um, couple things I wrote down is number one is she asked on that third question, can I be honest with you? I have a similar question of mine. It says, hey, is it all right if I'm ruthlessly compassionate with you, which is another way of saying that. Um, just making sure that you're setting the stage that you can actually be upfront with them. Because what you don't want to do, guys, is you don't want to adapt to try and buy the listing by overpricing it or getting a cut commission or doing something like that because your competition will do that. Second thing I wrote down is she tailored it for her own presentation. I think we're going to hear about that from Ricky as well. Listen, when you go through the listing presentation master, when you guys show up at the summit in Dallas, we're going to give you key things to do a step-by-step -step presentation. But at the end of the day, it's your presentation. You've got to be confident in what you're going to deliver. And then the third thing is she's highlighting some of the things that she does with her listings on social media that really blow the competition out of the water. So those are some things I took away. Ricky, over to you. Go ahead and give us your cliff note. <clears throat> okay, so cool. Um... I really like what Shauna said, to be honest with you, um, taking a little bit of something from everybody, you know, that's key, but, um, I do it a little different. <laughs> Mine is really, really simple. Um, you know, I think simplicity is, is the best way to, to produce, 
and keep everything simple and you can scale it. But uh, when I walk in, I take a folder with me. I'll tell you what's in it in a minute. But when I walk in, I'm kind of the opposite. I want to see the house and talk to them. I want to get them feeling comfortable, as comfortable as can be. Um, so I'm going to let them walk through the house. I'm going to let them talk and tell me everything about the house. And I'm going to try at some point to start connecting with this person much deeper, right? And, and really, at the end of the day, what I'm trying to figure out is why they're selling. You know, like what is causing them to make this decision? Did they lose their job, get a job? Did their mom die? Did their kids go to college? What's going on in their life? And that's when, when I start talking that kind of language, that's when I feel like I start really connecting with this person. And when I start really connecting with this person and we start to get this friend or friend, that's when I got them. Because that's, that's when, you know, most agents come in and they have this huge presentation, this PowerPoint, all this stuff. I like how simple Shauna's was. And I feel like Shauna's does connect as well because she's asking the right questions. You know, where do you have to go? When do you have to be there? What price point? Can I be honest with you? Those are incredible questions. Um, and those, those questions will connect um, a lot deeper than a lot of other presentations. That's, I think that's why Shauna wins a lot of her listings. So by the time I figure out why they're selling and I start relating to that reason um, on that deep level, then we've made a circle around the house and we're right back to wherever I set the folder down at a table or a couch, wherever we're gonna sit, we're gonna feel comfortable. So in my folder, I have a Remax folder. I got a Ricky Caruth pen. And I've got comps on the house, right? It's just one page. It's nothing, it's not, it's not a bunch of pages or anything. I want everything to be really simple and easy to read. I have a blank listing agreement and a $20 gift card, some business cards. So what I'm doing when I sit down is I want to go deeper with what they're trying to do, why they're trying to do it. And then I want to develop a game plan with them that involves me as their agent, right? And I want to I want to talk about the game plan from going from A to B to get it sold to C, wherever they're going to go, whatever they're trying to do. And uh, everything just kind of falls into place. So mine's more personal. It's more about confidence. It's more about connecting. And uh, that's what's won me the most listings. And I've tried everything. Awesome. So, yeah, go into the appointment now. Now, I'm still a little old school with my listing whole process, I guess you can say. So we still do the pre-listing presentation. So once the listing appointment is confirmed or, or, or set, we send over our pre-listing packet to their house. And so that way they can review it before our actual listing appointment. It does have a copy of our um, agreement in there. It, it has a copy of all the disclosures that we have to have. And like Shauna, um, we don't necessarily have the lowest commissions in, in, in our market area. So I like them to kind of know that stuff up front. And typically, pretty much 10 times out of 10, they're going to bring those questions up because they've already had a chance to, to view everything. But day of the actual listing appointment, I do tour the house. I go through the house with them. And this is kind of my time to build that rapport because for the most part, I'm not going to know who they are or, or pretty much anything about them. So as we're walking through the house, we are talking about the house, what, what attracted them to that house, how long they've been there. If I see like kids rooms, I'll, you know, tell them, tell me about their kids. I'll notice different things on, on the wall. Like I really use this time to like look for stuff to talk to them about that are not so much just so listing focused and you know so we're not really talking about foundations and stuff we're talking about plaques on the wall and we're talking about paintings and and music so once we do that i'm i'm taking notes on on the rooms and for the most part i'm just taking notes on things that i see like oh this room can be moved around or we should do something different in um in here then once we finish that is our kind of like sit down time. And I do have questions that, that, that I ask as well. One of those questions is what's most important to you when choosing a realtor? I, I want, I want to know like what they're actually looking for from me. And, and these questions that I ask are to help me in my sales process down the line if it if it comes to a point where like I need to overcome some objections. So um, what's most important when working with the realtor? Also, 
when working with the realtor, what are your pain points? So like what things don't you like, what things annoy you? Um, I really want to know like how they want to be treated. And then lastly, I ask them, do they have a specific price in mind? This is what gets to lead me into my actual presentation and price discussion. Because um, a lot of times people will say a price, but they'll say, you know, oh, I want to know what you say, or you're the expert or, you know, whatever. So this, this is a great opener for the actual, okay, let's just sit down and look at everything. I don't give them a price. I look through all the comps with them and I, I point out in the, in the comps discussion and, and I want to make it like super interactive. We look at bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, um, list price, sales price, and then days on market. And like literally through every single comp, we go through that with each other. And then I basically work the comps with them in front of them so they can see how I get to my number. And then after the fact, like sometimes some, some people will still say out like a super high number, like, oh, well, I still want this. But other times having this discussion, they've probably changed their mind. Like, oh, I was going to say this, but now I see, you know, that that is truly worth this. So from there, I transition into, okay, well, here's how we're going to hit that number or, you know, hit whatever number. I break up the, the marketing for them and show them their customized marketing plan. And I transition, like I transition all, all um, meetings that I have with, are you ready to get started? And then we kind of go from there to signing all the documents. All right. Thank you, Colton. So the listing presentation in three to five minutes. All right. A lot of it. Um, first of all, I love what everybody said, and I want everybody that's attending to realize that the main focus of what you just heard from the previous three speakers was that we make it about them. It's not about us. We're not, you know, ranting and raving about how good we are. We make it about the client, right? And, and that's my focus. So even before myself or one of my team members goes over to the house to, to list it and have that discussion, we emphasize beforehand having, you know, deep, genuine conversations about their situation, getting to know them, preparing everything for the pre-listing portion, which is uh, what we do that's similar to Chasten. I've literally revamped almost everything. And even though we still send, you know, the documentation, like the blank contract so they can see it, a net sheet and those types of things. Uh, what I did was I started kind of breaking some things down from the pre-listing package and actually sending it to them as video. And I've been experimenting with this the last like six months and it's been very effective. Because uh, just like Ricky said, I want to keep stuff simple. You know, I want to make it very easy and accessible to people. I want them to be able to just, you know, watch a video or read, you know, one page and, and, and get the thing. So we've been sending that extremely effective. The conversation leading up to the listing appointment, uh, I want to find out more about them, their situation, what's important to them about everything, how they're going to go about choosing a realtor what the top two or three things are that's important to them and their situation and get to know them a little bit better. So by the time that occurs and they've seen the videos and the pre-listing information, by the time we walk in, there's already a connection there. We're not just some face that they saw, some person they saw on video. They actually feel like they know us already. So already the conversation is a little bit more comfortable and a little better. Uh, so we walk in and the presentation that we do uh, is basically condensed into three portions, okay? We first uh, walk in, have a chat with them, go look around the house, confirm everything that we discussed over the phone, you know, chat with them a little bit more, make them feel a little bit more comfortable. When we sit down, I would say the first five minutes and first section is confirming their situation. Again, confirming what's important to them and really just having a heart to heart with them about the situation and what their expectations are and what it's gonna take, okay? The second part is when we transition into the meat and bones of the presentation, which primarily focuses on educating them about price and the importance of it, and then going through the CMA. And just like Ricky, we have a simple one page CMA printout. It's nothing fancy, right? It's very simple. And the third part is the only part where, where we'll bring up a few things that has to do with us, where we talk about us a little bit. And it's also similar to what Shauna said. We do push the social media aspect a little bit now because we're realizing that you know, the clients now are becoming a little bit more up to date on that. And they're actually asking us now, even before we go over, what's your social media presence? Like, what are you guys doing as far as video and that kind of stuff? So we felt it was good to include it now. And that last portion goes over a little bit about marketing and kind of what we do, just like a quick summary of it um, in regards to social media, what we do, 
And then that's when we transition in the end to get them to sign or if they have uh, any other questions. So it's really simple and there's nothing fancy about it at all. It's just a straight up conversation, very comfortable, very relaxed. And we, we make sure that when we go over there that they're comfortable, they're ready, and we're sitting in front of somebody who um, is ready to go and ready to put their home on the market. <clears throat> very simple. Um, again, I, we make it about them, but one of the, the keys, and I, I say this before we meet with them, and then again, I reiterate it at the presentation. It's literally in the script. I say, I just wanna be clear, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, uh, we're not here to just take a listing, right? Like that, that, that's not what we're here for, okay? Our focus is to help you get what you want, get you guys to Florida. That's the focus here and that's what you want, correct? So I just wanna let you know from this moment forward, if it's okay with you that we're gonna be 100% real and authentic with you as far as what it's gonna take, the situation, the price and everything, is that okay? And that's when they say yes. I even discuss that and I, I make that clear even before we meet with them, right? I tell them this is about you. And with your permission, I'm gonna tell you the truth, even if it stings a little bit, is that cool? And I, I say that over and over, and I think that's really what sets the stage. And it's not just the words, ladies and gentlemen, but you know, a lot of people are gonna to listen to your, the quality of your voice when you meet with them, you know, your eye contact, your body language, that's all the stuff that has to scream to them, I'm here for you, right? Because it's very easy to just spurt out a couple of words, but when everything about you says and demonstrates and speaks to the client and says, hey, this person's here for me. They don't have an agenda. That's the key. You cannot have an agenda. If you give them the vibe that you have an agenda, then they're not gonna trust you. But the moment that that's off the table, you can create a connection and it's much easier from that point to have a real straight up and honest conversation with them about the situation. Um, so you guys know I already set the stage from the beginning of can I be honest with them because it's really important to me. Uh, when I got in this business, I'm not going to lie, I took some listings I shouldn't have. I took some overpriced listings. It was miserable. It was uncomfortable. It was not for me. But the company I was with was just saying, go take everything, right? So I did. Um, one of the first things I say after that is I would love to sell your house for a million dollars. We're not in a million dollar market. The average price in my market is 167,000. So if the average price in your market is a million, go to 5 million. You know, I'd love to sell your home for a million dollars. If I could do that, I would do that tomorrow for you. And I just want you to know that, right? That would be wonderful for you. That would be wonderful for me. And then I give them real world examples of other agents that have been on listing appointments and things that sellers have shared with us. Um, so for example, in our market right now, recently, a couple of agents were talking. There were five agents that went on one listing appointment. Four agents gave the same price and the same commission. One agent gave an estimate of $100,000 higher than the other four agents and offered to charge 1% less than the other four agents. So we use that example and say, look, there are people out there who are willing to take your listing for whatever you say you want to list it at. Not only that, they'll give you inflated numbers and they'll show you a market analysis that makes that seem realistic. But the reality is if five agents are going on that appointment and four of us are saying the same thing, something's got to be wrong with the fifth one, wouldn't you agree? And so they get that real life of what's going on in the market right now. I don't know about you guys, but we are out there competing more than we have in the last six years for sure. Um, you know, we're up against agents where in the past we'd go out and just be one agent. Um, at minimum, we're competing with one other agent. <clears throat> I think it's a lot. It's, it's everything really. I mean, you know, you have to go in there and you have to really believe before you even get the listing that that you, you are the best choice because you, your intentions are so pure that you're there to help that person with the bigger reasons why they're buying or selling. You know, why they're buying their next house, why they're selling this house. Your intentions that you're trying to help them with that life move, not necessarily selling the property. You know, there's very few agents that actually think that way. And because of that, it should put you on top. And so that, that confidence comes from your intent. And it's super important. It needs to be 100%, not 99.9, .9, not 98, not 90. It needs to be 100, fully committed to the fact that you are going to do the best job for them. Uh, I mean, it could, be, it could be as quick as, you know, 15, 20 minutes, or it could take up. I've been in listing appointments for a little over an hour. It just kind of depends on where the conversation goes. You know, you don't really try to rush it. Um, you know, you try to you know, you, you try to move in the direction that you need to go in, but you're not really, you want them to feel comfortable. Whatever it takes to make them feel comfortable with you, your job when you go to these appointments, your number one job is to make them feel comfortable with you. That's it. 
And so whatever it takes to make that happen. See, for me, it's 45 minutes to an hour. Um, I'm Southern, so I talk a lot. I tend to be right there at that hour mark. Um, but if I find someone that isn't as talkative or has a completely different personality than I do, then we're usually between 40, 45 minutes out the door. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so um, on average, around 30 to 45 minutes, um, if it's not going in the direction that we feel like it should go in, it could be shorter, 15 minutes or so. But 30 to 45 minutes is, is kind of that um, sweet spot, especially since we send the pre-listing um, packet, then it kind of chops off a lot of time that normally we would be talking about that other stuff. Um, I would say on average, most of them are around the 30 to 35 minute mark. You know, we have some that are quicker, some that take a little bit longer, but uh, you know, it really depends on the client. Uh, after a while, you'll start to detect people's comfort levels and if they're ready or not. And some people just after five minutes, I'm, you know, in the beginning portions of the presentation, I just kind of look at them and I'm like, kind of, I feel like you're ready already. And they're like, yeah. And then we just sign. But some people have a lot of objections and questions. So it really just depends. But on average, I would say 30 to about 35 minutes from, I think that's extremely important. Um, especially the getting them to engage, right? I think it's even more than just them saying yes. Uh, you guys have to remember that we live, especially nowadays in a world where most people's attention spans are very short. You know, you go to the movie or you watch a video, if you really look, the frames are cut like every two or three seconds and that conditions people to be, you know, very, uh, you know, have a very short attention span. So you have to make sure that you don't lose people. And I've said this many times, if I'm ever explaining something or you're speaking to somebody and they miss a point or you move on when they're still stuck on something you said or they don't quite grasp a concept that you were explaining, like they're stuck on that now. And as you keep talking, they're still, stuck on what you said before and what you're saying is just going in one ear and out the other so having those breaks and pauses and getting them to say yes makes sure and makes for certain that you're on the same page keeps the momentum going and it keeps you guys together right the worst thing you want to do is ever uh, at a listing presentation is to be speaking and you know you can tell that the husband and the wife or the person that you're talking to is checked out they're looking around they're not even paying attention so i 100 percent think it's extremely important man because it sets the stage for later it keeps them engaged and it makes sure that you can educate them and lead them along the way and they really understand what you're saying. Cool, hey Brian, are your uh, videos, presentation videos on YouTube? Uh, no, the ones that we, that we send in the pre-listing package, they're private videos that I haven't made public, but there is, I think, one. I have a playlist on my YouTube, uh, I think that's called like presentations, pricing, and that kind of stuff, and I think one of the videos from there is in that uh, group of videos that I sent. And I think it has to do with like the importance of pricing a home. And it's like a two minute video that I made years ago. I think that one is one that's on YouTube public that people can look at. And that's kind of the style of the videos that I put in the pre-listing information. Cool. Chasten, what do you think about that uh, as far as um, trial closes or getting to say yes along the way, ways to make sure they're understanding or, or, or staying comfortable through the conversation? How important is that? Yeah, it's super important to me. And it's so crazy because I feel like I've, I've adapted that in just like normal life and even training my team, you know, I'm like, is this clear? Does this make sense? Um, you know, yes, yes, yes. But aside from even those like yes questions, I, I, I also ask them, them questions that I know are going to be able to help me sell to them you know, later down the line or if I have to overcome certain objections something that, that, I, that I make a true attempt at doing is establishing some type of personal connection with them very, very, very early on because I, I am, I'm not so good in listing appointments when we don't have something like we could talk about if things start going south or, you know, if like people start getting uncomfortable, I can read body language very well. So it's like, I, I really want to know what's, what's fun to them. What, what things do they do they actually like and build that true rapport? Um, what what things do they look for in an agent? I want to make sure that they understand just like how this relationship can work differently, so that we can truly have those honest conversations. And you know, if it's jokingly or if it's like more stern and serious, or I, I mean, I make things super interactive, so we're constantly talking the whole time and everything that we do we do it together and I just feel like it it helps to sell when you when you have to go in for that like true close sign the documents here cool awesome um <laughs> Ricky here's a question for you how do you handle the client that wants you to list but also wants you to discount your commission 
Uh, <clears throat> the thing about discounting commissions, man, is that you, you, they're just testing you. You know what I mean? They want to see how, what I feel like they're just testing you. They want to see that you're going to stand firm so that when you, when you, when you start negotiating their deal, you're going to stand firm for them. You know what I mean? So I, I think it's good to push back a little right there just to see what they do. Cause they're just, they're just putting something in your court to see how you respond. Right. And you want to respond in a way that you, that, that there's going to make them feel comfortable with you responding to the deal when you get a deal on their listing. And so you push back, you see how they respond, you know, and if they, if there, if there's this tug and pull and we're just not getting anywhere, then, okay, cool. Look, I'll tell you what, I'll do it for five. If I represent the buyer right now, I'm still at six. I'm five. If I represent the buyer and everybody's happy, right? Chances are another agent's going to sell it. I sell about 12, 13% of my own listing. So there's a chance that'll happen, but Hey, that's still 5%. They're happy. I'm happy. We have a deal. We're moving on. So I, I think the, the moral of the story is, is to stay firm because they're just kind of testing you. Right. I think when, when we look at testing too, this is in a lot of relationships, especially with a, a seller is assuming that they accept you and that they approve of you and that they want you to be their listing. Don't go into this thinking I have to earn it or thinking I might not be good enough or thinking, you know what, shoot, when they test me on this commission thing, think, oh crap, maybe they don't think I'm worth 6%. When we start to think that we're not worth it, when we truly start to have that doubt come in our mind, they're going to sense that. Okay. So you got to go into these presentations, just assuming you are the best, assuming that they fully accept you, approve of you, and that they're going to sign your listing agreement. Shauna, how would you handle that when uh, someone um, wants you as their listing agent, but they want you to do it at a discount? So for us, we go back to how many homes we've sold, how many days on market. We look at sales price to list price ratio and how we outperform the market. Right now for the last 12 months, if a seller lists with us, they're going to get 1.7% more in sales price, price to list price ratio anyway. So if we're talking about 1% and I'm already getting you, you know, 0.7% more than the people that are charging you 1% less, what are you really saving at the end of the day? Also, I know exactly how much it costs us to put a listing on the market and market it the way that we like to market it to get it sold. So if they're asking me to discount, then I'm sharing with them, look, this is exactly <coughs> what you take to get your home sold and get the most money possible. You know, I don't know if other agents have shared with you how much we actually have to spend to make this happen at an effective level, but this is what we're doing. Now, are there any of those services that you don't want or would you like to extend your time on the market? And at that point, they're like, no, 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 we don't want to do that. We just want to get it sold. We want to move on. We don't want to do that. We want the most money. So it's usually taking care of itself with just filling them in and educating them. I mean, I love educating our sellers on exactly you know all the steps that we're taking so it's fun for me cool awesome so we just got another question from brandon higgins as a newer agent would you slightly discount um, um and build stats or just be firm on commission i'm going to answer that real quick because no you don't want to slightly discount your commission just to build stats because what you want to build are behaviors habits if you start with your habit and your behavior of discounting commissions it becomes easier to <coughs> just normally discount your commission. You want it to be normal to charge full commissions. You know, I know a lot of our mastermind members are charging 7%, keeping four and a half and a processing fee of, of 900 or uh, you know more for their processing fee. So you set the stage for what your value is, no matter what level of agent you are. Um, so uh, here's a question I'm gonna ask you, Chase, and what is, what is your top objection that you consistently experience and how do you uh, handle it or overcome it in a listing presentation? Um, I mean, kind of right now in our market is the commission. I mean, we're, we're in, in Dallas, there's, there's so many agents and we have so many companies. And like I said, I mean, the way that I do things, we are on more of the, the higher side. And so being able to overcome those with, I mean, like I've had to make some adjustments. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. And what I what I've done was I actually created a, a different tiered commission to where it literally ranges from eight percent and goes down to four, depending on not only what we do, but what 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 services they want, how the deal ends up being structured, um, all that kind of stuff. Because, I mean, there is there is so much competition out here and and, you know, we can we can all show value but there there comes a point when we had to make some adjustments 
And so with doing that though, it has it's a, it's actually worked out a lot better because not only is it, has the conversation changed from, oh, I want a lower commission. It's, it's gone to, oh, well, I don't, I don't mind paying this commission, which is more than the standard based on y'all doing all of this or like based on me being able to get this. And then even on top of that, we're offering a, I mean, we, we charge a transaction fee of two ninety five dollars for each transaction. Um, and it's, it's really just the stuff that we offer them. It's, it's not just during the actual like listing time frame, but even after it. So, so we've adapted things like moving supplies and um, housewarming parties. And, and if they buy from us too, then we, we do this and this. So um, it's, it's, it's different structures for, for, for different deals nowadays with us. Cool. Awesome. So um, here's a, here's a question for you, Brian. Uh, if they don't sign uh, the listing agreement at the appointment, how do you handle the follow-up process? Great question. Uh, if this happens, uh, what I aim for every single time is before I leave the house, I want to set a follow-up appointment with them to come back, whether it's within 24, 48 hours, or depending on what they're saying. Most of the time I can get that appointment. I would say four out of five times I'll get that appointment. Now, if I don't, and whether I do or I don't, as soon as I leave, I send them a video, right? I'll be in my car, I'll shoot them a quick 20 or 30 second video. Hey, uh, Colton, thanks for having me over. I really appreciate the opportunity. I'm here if you need me. Just a quick little video. Now, when I get back to the office, uh, the plan of action depends on what we discussed and where they're, where they're going and what their time frame is. So if they said, hey, we're gonna meet with somebody else, we're gonna give it another day or two, or we have another appointment tomorrow night, <clears throat> then I'm calling and texting them uh, that, following evening, probably an hour after that appointment and saying, hey, what's going on? What's the status? You know, uh, are you ready to go? So it really is a constant contact from that point, but it's also derived directly from the conversation and meeting. So it's based on their time frame.